Lights, camera, lies. From deadly lasers to terrifying quicksand, here are 12 myths that you probably believe cause movies. Number one, might save your life. Number 12. We've all seen it dozens of times. A rugged action hero causes a massive explosion with their badassery. Then they walk away from that explosion in slow motion, staring down the camera with smoldering intensity. Even if it's an explosion powerful enough to rip through buildings, our hero will pick themselves up, brush the dirt off their shoulder, and carry on with being awesome. In real life, the shockwave would initially compress the air in your body and then cause it to massively expand. This is super not good for you and will wreak havoc on your internal organs particularly the lungs and heart, which may even be torn apart like flimsy tissue paper. Assuming you survived the shockwave, you wouldn't be calmly walking away. You'd be screaming in agony. <laughs> Pop quiz, hot shot. What movie myth is evident during the skydiving scene in Point Break? I'll give you a hint. I'm doing it right now. Let us know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned till later in the video to see if you're right. Number 11. According to the movies, pulling a grenade pin with your teeth is a surefire way to use the explosive and look awesome while under enemy fire. In real life, it's guaranteed to send you to the dentist with a few missing teeth. The safety pin, the key word here being safety, isn't exactly easy to pull out. It's what keeps whoever plans on throwing the grenade safe from blowing themselves to pieces because they pulled out too soon. The likely real life scenario is that you'll be spitting chiclets while the pin remains firmly in place. <laughs> you should have gone for the head. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the video. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. That way you won't miss any of our newest content and it helps other people find the channel. You're great. Number nine, don't listen to John McClane. Shooting a padlock off with a handgun is nearly impossible. They're made of thick iron or steel and a pistol bullet won't really do the trick, regardless of its caliber. You'll likely only be successful in distorting the metal, but that would just jam it further. Not to mention the dangers of the bullet ricocheting right back into your silly body. <laughs> a more realistic approach would be using a shotgun loaded with special ammunition. Don't get any weird ideas, YouTube. Number 10. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. The cinematic understanding is that Star Wars style laser blasters and sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads will light up the room like the 4th of July. It's entirely possible that high-powered lasers will replace conventional weaponry at some point in the near future. That being said, in the real-world version of these blasters, you most likely won't be able to see the beam, since it's a concentrated stream of electromagnetic radiation. Light needs to reflect off scattered particles or a surface to become visible. Think about a nightclub. Light reflects off the smoke and other particles in the atmosphere, which is why you can see the projector beams. Why are you pretending like you've ever been to a nightclub? Shut up. Therefore, in the vacuum of space, you'd never be able to see laser beams. We get it. A bunch of pew pew sounds with no light show would make any movie with star in the title visually vapid. Oh snap. I just said the word of the day, vapid. Vapid means offering nothing that is stimulating or challenging. Good synonyms would be dull or uninteresting. See if you can use the word in a sentence in the comment section below and we'll feature the most creative phrase in the next video. And big shout out to Baker3311 with virulent as the word of the day. He wrote, my mother-in-law is always virulent when she stops by our home. Great sentence, Baker, and good luck with the upcoming holidays. Number eight, tracing a call. This next myth should sound familiar to anyone who's seen a spy movie. The good guys have to trace a call, so one of them has to keep the bad guy talking. They almost get it before the technologically savvy villain hangs up. Frustration overwhelms the room. In practical scenarios, the police would know where you were as soon as you made the call. Networks nowadays are required to have location tracking technology exactly for this purpose. Even with stolen or prepaid phones, tracing a call would be significantly faster than what's depicted in movies. The trope has carried on into the digital age, despite the fact that the keep them talking technology has been outdated for roughly three decades. 
Number 7. Jurisdiction In movies, Jurisdiction does to cops what Kryptonite does to Superman. Tell me, do you bleed? As soon as a villain is outside of a pursuing cop's jurisdiction, the myth is that they're home free. In reality, jurisdiction rules vary by state and law enforcement agency. Different agencies have cross-jurisdictional agreements in place, which increases the reach of an officer's authority. So if you're assuming an invisible line will stop an officer in hot pursuit, you'd better think twice, you little bandit you. <laughs> Number six. The understanding in most thrillers is that you have to wait 24 hours before you can report a person missing. Every so often, cops will tell a worried family member that they have to wait 24 hours before they can do anything. The supposed reasoning applies to adults, since they're allowed to wander around before it becomes a police matter. This doesn't actually translate to real life. It's pure fantasy. If you have genuine concerns about a person's well-being and you don't know their whereabouts, you should contact the police, now! It's worth mentioning that missing isn't a crime. So even if the adult you're reporting is found, the police aren't obligated to tell you where they are. Still, this is a dangerous myth to spread around, and some government websites insist you don't have to wait any length of time. Number five, infinity ammo. So it's unlikely that you believe this myth in the first place, but it's so overused that we had to mention it. For all of you diehard action fans out there, no, guns don't have unlimited ammo. Sure, the argument can be made that showing someone constantly reloading would mess with the movie's pacing, and that we as viewers should presumably imagine that reloading is done when the camera cuts away. But be that as it may, it's still irritating to see someone letting off shots from a revolver like a friggin' machine gun. Number four. There's a reason why hospitals call in an anesthetist when they want someone to be put under. There's a delicate balance that must be achieved when you're trying to chemically induce sleep. Using too much of some chemical might do serious damage, while using too little may have no effect. It's why the chloroform rag in movies is particularly annoying. Even with perfect dosing, it would take at least five minutes before someone would pass out due to chloroform. But Hollywood would have you believe that holding a chloroform rag over someone's nose and mouth works perfectly every time and within seconds. Number three, we all know that the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to one. Never tell me the odds. Whenever our space-dwelling heroes are confronted with flying through a crowded asteroid belt, they barely get out by the skin of their teeth. The crew breathes a sigh of relief and a mandatory, that was close, is uttered. The truth is that it wasn't really that close, since space is a really big place. Even in the tightest asteroid belts, the rocks are still a few hundred miles apart, which makes maneuvering through them less of a squeeze and more of a cakewalk. That doesn't make Han Solo any less awesome. Number two, the dark side of the moon. No, not the Pink Floyd album, but the misnomer that has inspired some cringe-worthy sci-fi fallacies. First off, you don't have to worry about the good old moon. It gets plenty of sunshine in both hemispheres. What people usually mean by dark side of the moon actually means the far side of the moon, since about 40% of the moon's surface is hidden from us. But far side of the moon doesn't sound nearly as cool. It's answer time! So what was the movie myth that was evident during Point Break's skydiving scene? If you haven't guessed it yet, I was talking about talking. Movies would have you believe that you can sustain the same level of conversation while skydiving as you would at a fancy afternoon tea party. In reality, the sound of the wind going past your ears is deafening since you're falling at roughly 200 feet per second. This is why experienced skydivers have signals through which they communicate while falling. Number one. In most movies, falling into quicksand is a guaranteed death sentence. Why wouldn't it be? The idea of sand slowly invading your airwaves is nightmarish. Thankfully, it's unlikely to happen in real life. You'd only sink about waist deep due to the difference in the density between the human body and quicksand. The mixture of clay, salt water, and fine sand allows you to eventually float out. Still, pulling your legs out through sheer force would be like trying to lift a medium-sized car. So just in case you find yourself in a sandy pickle, here are a few helpful tips. The first thing you should do is stay calm and take a deep breath to increase your buoyancy. The more you fight it, the quicker you'll sink, so exertion is the enemy. 
Make sure to keep your arms out of the quicksand and as crazy as it sounds, lie on your back. By shifting the pressure, you'll be able to raise your legs up, slowly swim out of the quicksand and roll onto the hard ground. And finally, the most important step, once you're out of the quicksand, don't forget to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>